Really, really fascinating discussion today, guys, on the optimization of masculine features that you can control. Now, caveat here, or preface, I should say, is this will be more effective if you were younger. If you were in your teens, you can really maximize your facial growth, your facial width. And uh, I mean, you're, you're more mal uh, malleable in this way. You're, uh, your bones haven't yet set, and there's a lot of opportunity for you to kind of really optimize your face facial um, setting. You know, if you're setting concrete, you can set the bones a little bit better when you're younger. However, there's a lot of evidence from some of the uh, posts I'm going to share with you today that do show that individuals from 25 to 26 years old are still experiencing growth. And I have a couple of uh, tools and instruments here that I'm going to share with you a little bit later on how to fully go the nuclear option and um, optimize your facial features in a more attractive way. Now, I will say at this point that, look, I think obsessing about what you look like can be feminine and is not the end all and be all. However, it would also be naive for me to say and not recognize that a lot of people base decisions on whether or not somebody is attractive or not. So should you be spending all your time obsessing about it? Certainly not. Does it matter? Yes, it does. So maybe maybe a, a strange way to preface it, but I'm, I'm just going to give you the information. You can do what you want with the information. So there's this individual here on the left-hand side um, showing the optimization of the maxilla and the upswing of the maxilla on his facial features. This is a young individual as well, but you can see here the difference in the pickup of the jaw you've got this kind of like downward posture. Even the eyes as well feel unsupported comparatively to this individual. You've got this upward swing now and uh, you know, far more prominent jawline, far more attractive. And uh, the last one here showing and denoting this upswing of the development, this forward growth of the maxilla. And this is purely due, I'm gonna put it, maximize it here so we can just make this a little bit bigger so you can all see. Um, this is purely due to mewing and chewing for over a year. The second photo was approximately eight months ago. So eight months, that is a substantial change in the facial features of this individual in eight months. And more credence to the idea of me saying that the younger the you, are, you are, the more malleable your bones and facial features are. And uh, it frustrates me that I didn't know about this information when I was certainly this individual's age. I think I may have heard across the heard the term mewing, but I foregoed it in terms of it being pseudoscience. But there are some changes here, especially on this individual on the right hand side, which show even after these younger years, the difference an individual can make on his facial features. You can see here a dramatic increase in the facial width of the cheekbones and then the development of the masseter muscle and the more prominence in the the, the hollow, hollowness in the cheekbones, which is a very sought after characteristic. And I would imagine that there's also a difference in the eyes, right? You t hear this term hunter eyes, where the eyes are higher set beneath the brow or into the skull, into the um, into the eye sockets, which are perceived as, uh, as being more attractive. What's really nice is this individual drops his routine, pardon me, down here. Uh, I chew mastic gum for two to three hours a day. I take one day off each week. The way I chew is one minute on one side of the face, and then I make a ball in the middle middle teeth, and then I press the gum, gum with the tongue against the palate. Then I chew for one minute on the other side of the face and start over. Um, he's also referencing some of Mike Mew's material here and also uses chisel tabs, which I'll share with you in just a moment. And the last one I wanted to share with you is the effects of purely mewing and effective mewing and how this has an increased effect on, um, on the expansion of your palate. And then subsequently the cheekbones pick up forward growth of the maxilla and fundamentally an increase of some of those attractive characteristics we want to see in the facial features. This individual denotes their particular journey of their tongue posture not being optimal, not swallowing optimally, uh, but getting okay results in that time period. They also did uh, a tongue tie release. I've still got my tongue tied. You can see it's still tied to the um, to the uh, to the base here. 
I, I wouldn't think this should matter too much in my estimation. Maybe I need to do some more research of this, but the most important factor in the uh, tongue posture is the back third of the tongue pressed up hard against the palate and starting to expand the molars right in the back of the roof of the, uh, of the mouth. But I would imagine if your tongue tie is released, you might have more flexibility, more capacity to optimize that particular posture. So it might be, might be something that I, I look into. There's a, a very interesting mudra called the Kalatri mudra. I'm probably butchering that, where the yogis cut the tongue tie themselves with a razor and they can actually get the tongue to a point where it goes back behind the palate into the nasal and um, throat canal and comes up, up behind, uh, which is maybe not a conversation on the topic that we are discussing today, but I can, I can, I can talk about that. Anyway, digressing here. The change has happened only because of mewing. I tried Myobrace for like four days in total. I used it for about 30 minutes per day, so I didn't do it that much. I decided not to use it anymore. Uh, but purely just through tongue posture after the release of the tongue tie is how they've managed to get these this uh, the effects on the uh, on the palate expansion. Pardon me here, and uh, we've also got differences in the face. I used to look older four years ago than I look now. I don't look like I'm constantly sleepy anymore. Again, the picking up of the face. My face got a little bit shorter and wider. It looks like I lost a bit of fat in my face since 2019, but I actually gained a couple of kilograms. So they're heavier, but the, let's say the distribution, how they're holding the weight in the face is a lot better. So it's perceived as being a lot lighter. You can still tell from my face that I struggled with mouth breathing at some point, especially on one side, since I have really an, asy uh, an asymmetrical face. It was really asymmetrical before I started mewing, so that's not the cause. You can even see how one side of my arch looks worse from the first picture. Yeah, probably, I mean, it's difficult to tell with the shadows and the lights, but I would say this side here, maybe a little bit lower, but this is a remarkable change in, uh, well, it's been a while, it's been a couple, it's been four years, but I mean, if you can imagine the changes that's going to have on different areas of your life. I mean, look, we can talk about the aesthetics, but also you, we need to talk about recovery, breathing, even your ability to speak, which are some of the reasons that I'm going into the, some of the nuclear options I'm going to share with you. Uh, well, I'll share with you just now. So for me, there are, there are two main areas that I want to kind of optimize in myself. Now I, I have a narrow palette. I believe if you look at my palette, probably can't see it too well. But comparatively to this individual, I would say it's quite, it's quite narrow. Uh, it probably looks closer to the first one here. Now, I, I don't have too many problems in uh, breathing, um, but I don't have as much room in my mouth as I would uh, like. Uh, I do find myself sometimes stumbling over my words, and I do pride myself in being a little bit more articulate than the average person, and I'm always looking at different areas that I can increase to increase my speaking ability, my, my, uh, my uh, conversation and social skills, whatever. So I want to increase the, the, the size of my palette, the expansion of my palette. And I also want to get a little bit of greater width in my face. I believe that there's a big opportunity. If you look at my face, it kind of comes fairly long. I have a little bit, I think, heaviness down here, but I see a real opportunity in terms of aesthetics to start to widen the mid face. And this happens through palate expansion. And you can see here with this individual, a really good example of the widening of the face because of mewing and some of the bits and pieces that he was mentioned in his particular protocol. And this is all to do with um, the maxilla bone. So this is, uh, I should have actually got a picture of the maxilla bone, but essentially it's, it's, it's the one that kind of sits right in the front of the face. Some people call it the... Uh, the bone of attractiveness because it, it's, it's the most prominent bone on the front of the face that denotes the first impressions you get. So we want to develop the maxilla. How do we do this? So number one, uh, mewing is just simple, good tongue posture, keeping the third back third of the tongue up against the mouth, not hard, but just making sure we're, that when we're in rest, it's always in that position. The second one I'm doing now is hard mewing. So I'm taking times in my day to do sets of 
pushing the third, the back third of the tongue as hard as I can against the palate for as long as I can. And typically I'll do three sets of that. So it might be 30 seconds to a minute, hard mewing, rest, recover, and then I'll go again. And then the last one is thumb pulling, which is probably the most aggressive one out of them. Thumb pulling is a process by which instead of using the tongue to expand the back palate, you're using your thumbs. So I'll demonstrate what this looks like. And typically I'll do this in the shower or in the bath because again, you have to keep washing your hands unless you can, sometimes you can use like a flannel or a towel on top of the thumbs to kind of keep your hands uh, clean. And um, it also can damage the skin if you're doing it for a while. So essentially what you're doing is you're taking your thumbs here and you're going back to the, to the third of the palate. Your gag reflex might kick in here, but once you continue to do this, that, that will abate. And you'll feel, you'll know when you've got the right spot because there's pressure and there's tension. So I'm putting the thumbs at the back, I'm holding the sides of my face with my other fingers, and I'm just, I'm doing this with my thumbs, right? I'm pulling apart and I'm pulling a little bit up. So I'm expanding my palate. And this follows a similar effect of MSE, which is an expander you can get done by an orthodontist, which is quite expensive, where they put a machine at the bottom of the, at the top of the palate with two little metal prongs that go this way and they just push the teeth apart when you, you crank it. So this is a more natural and I suppose less invasive way of doing that in a, in a, in a much less safer way because I don't believe you can crack the sutures down the middle of your head unlike MSE, which is what MSE does. It cracks the sutures and uh, creates more bone formation there. So I'll just demonstrate what this looks like. And I'm pulling this way, right? And I'll do that for 30 seconds. It can be a little bit uncomfortable. It can be a little bit painful. I'll do that for, I'll, I'll do probably about six sets of that. And I'm doing it again when I'm showering, when I'm in the bath. So it's not it's not particularly arduous to do. And uh, over time, the months, the years, we're gonna see greater, well, hopefully you can see, there's a little dummy here, because I record a video every single day, whether or not I'm getting greater width in my, my face. So that is maxilla development. And these are also gonna have an effect on the cheekbones I mentioned here. So greater facial width. You can imagine like if there's force going under here, like if, 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 I, if I look here, if the, the, the thumbs are coming up and I'm pulling this way, this is all gonna widen here. The cheekbones are gonna widen. If I'm pushing up as well, the eyes will be set a little bit higher under the, under the eyebrows. Now these aren't gonna be drastic changes. These are gonna be minimal changes. Uh, aesthetics does come into it, of course, but also breathing better, recovering better, speaking better, and uh, all, all these other things. So we'll segue over to masseter development here, which is the strongest muscle in the human body, actually pound for pound, and denotes how your jaw is typically gonna present itself. Now, this gentleman here mentioned that he was using something called chisel, and I have some chisels here, and they are just these little rubber pads, I guess you could say, that you chew on when you're driving, when you're working, and they really work that mass to muscle. Only need to do it for about 15 minutes. They, uh, I, th I think the trouble with a lot of these is just being consistent with it, right? Mewing, hard mewing, thumb pulling, chisel, mastic gum, it's just being consistent with the practice. So make the habit easy. I have the chisels right on my desk where I'm working. So in the morning, you know, after I've had a coffee, I just take these out, put these in, chew for 15 minutes. If it's not that, I use Chios mastic gum here. So you can kind of see this is the, the brand I've, I've got. And all they are, I've shown these before, but they're, uh, they're tree sap, very, very hard forms of, uh, of gum. And uh, give your jaw a real workout for sure. And uh, the last one, oh, I've put thumb pulling twice. But um, I mean, there, there are some other interesting ones in terms of uh, you can get a resistance band maybe, put it in the teeth, pull the resistance band down and do jaw curls. That could be another way that you develop the masseter to muscles, but I'm very, very happy with my masseter to muscle development. I think the beard helps as well now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, but these two, in my opinion, 
I believe will get you the results that you want. I think the challenges with the masseter to muscle is because you're using it quite a lot, you're speaking a lot, maybe you're eating a lot, is you really have to give it a different stimulus. When you're using some of the chisels, like I've showed you the white ones, I've got these black ones here as well that are more heavy duty, they really give your jaw a workout. You get fatigue, you get DOMS the next day. Don't overdo it, is my personal opinion with this. And the last one is posture development and, and just getting in the habit of keeping yourself in a position where you're optimizing your, um, your breathing, you're not mouth breathing. One of the ways you can do this is chin tucks. And this is where you put your back of the head against the wall and you just push up against the wall like that and give yourself as many double chins as you can. And that kind of trains, because most people have anterior head carry, meaning the head is coming forward like this because you know we're driving, we're watching TV, we're on the computer, we're on our phones. All of our posture is anterior uh, head carry. So when you're doing these chin tucks, you're conscious, you're, you're readdressing all the damage that you've been doing. So it's good that we consciously do this exercise, even if you think you have good posture. Like I think my posture's better than most, but I will still do these exercises. Uh, nasal strips when you sleep. The last three are all sleep related, and these are new ones that I've been doing. So the first one is uh, nasal strips. So this is the brand I have here, Breathe Right. This is from Amazon. And uh, none of these are sponsored, by the way. This is just what I personally do. And all they are, are uh, I'll take one of these out, little strips with a little bit of glue. There's no chemicals or anything in these. These are, you know, natural, nothing getting into your, uh, you know, doesn't vasodilate the, 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 the nose or whatever. Is there little tabs like this? And basically they have little, you can take them off with a plaster. And basically when they stick like this, because, because it's quite firm, it pulls the skin up just a bit and you get uh, probably about an extra 10 to 20% more a, a, a easier ability to breathe. Like they're really noticeable for me when I use that. And I'm sure you might have seen Alex Hormozy using them all the time because he's, he's got a problem with a deviated septum, I believe. So the, those ones are really, really good. Highly recommend those. I've been pairing this with Sleep Tape as well. So this is the other brand that I use, uh, Longevity. And very similar to the um, to the nasal, get these open, is they're just little tabs like this with a little kind of like plaster back. You just tear it a bit, hold on, tear it a bit like this. And then you just stick it, I have to be careful of my mustache, but you just stick it on. You have to make sure your lips are dry, otherwise, again, the, the, the glue won't, won't stick. And you just tape your mouth right? This way you avoid opening your mouth and <sighs> snoring. If you have a problem with snoring, it might be difficult. It might be challenging. That's why I think pairing it with the, the breathing straps is, um, is, is the best. And the last one, this is one I've just started trying. This is really a nuclear option. You're going to laugh at me for this one, is head strapping, right? Even if you've got your mouth taped, you're just gluing your lips together. So the jaw can still fall down a little bit and your teeth aren't, uh, your teeth aren't together. Now, you'll notice with all of the postures here that the head is shortening. So if you look at this gentleman here, look how long the head is compared to this one. He's probably lost an inch, like half an inch to an inch of head height. And that's because all the mewing is, is doing this to the head, right? We're short, we're, we're, moving the head in this direction, okay? With the upward growth and the, and the mid-face expansion and where, you know, the anterior forward head carriage, this, this, is, this is happening. So we wanna push the skull back and keep the chin up and the tongue firm against the palate. You can use head strapping when you're going to sleep to help you continue this posture, you know, when you go unconscious, when you go under. Uh, this is gonna look very, very stupid, I only wear this when I'm going to sleep. So you just put, put these on the, on the chins. You have little hoops here to put uh, you know, your ears through. I don't do that just because I find it better this way. Up here and strap, okay? So I'm talking through this, but if I just relax, my teeth are together. It's not, I mean, you can, you can change how tight this is, but it just keeps the jaw closed. It's not uncomfortable. And then I've got my nose, my nose tape as well. 
and I can breathe fine. You wouldn't need to pair this and this together. I mean, that, that would probably be overkill. And uh, I tried that last night, worked fairly well. These are very inexpensive as well. I think it was like seven pounds for me, seven dollars, whatever the case may be is for you. And I'm, I, let me just say, I'm just starting to do this based on the evidence here. It could go terribly wrong. <laughs> I don't think I'm unattractive by any uh, stretch of the imagination. I think there are certainly areas that we can work on. Um, I'm just interested to see what would happen because I don't believe these changes that I'm doing are going to be too encompassing on my daily life. The chisel tabs are here on my desk. I just pop them in and I chew. I have to be conscious of my tongue posture. That's fine. And then when I'm going to sleep, I just put the straps on. I put the I put the mouth tape or the head or the uh, the head strap on. And when I'm in the shower or bath, I just do three minutes of thumb pulling. And I think that protocol is very doable for most people and feasible for most people. And especially if you're young and you're a teenager, you could see very very rapid changes with, uh, with, with, with the introduction of some of these methods. So as, as the months go on, maybe we might start to see changes. I mean, maybe some insecurities for me are just a little bit of, um, downward droop here to my eyes. You can kind of see I've got very small bags, maybe not noticeable to you, but I suppose when you are living in your own body, you're your biggest critic, but it'd be interesting to see if this has a palatable change in my appearance if some of these very minor aesthetic uh what would you say problems are resolved and um then you guys can start to execute perhaps on some of my tools with more convictions here but let me know what you guys think i'm going to make this one a patreon exclusive so you guys are going to get this first and um, let me know if there's anything else that you would add uh to this particular let's say facial feature stack speak soon